I am Katerina Barros and I'm a PhD student from the Research Institute for Medicine in Lisbon. In this video abstract, I'm going to present the results recently published in Brain Communications with Professor Edlard Fernandes regarding the role of S1 and RB in the chronic in vivo model of multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is an autoimmune inflammatory demyelinating disorder of the central nervous system. Pathologically, it is known that the breakdown of the blood-brain barrier allows the infiltration of overactivated immune cells that, together with glial activation, contributes to exacerbated neuroinflammation. Therefore, it promotes oligodendrocytes damage, leading to demyelination and consequent loss of synaptic connections. In pathological conditions, s 1 b a small inflammatory molecule, has detrimental consequence, including neuronal death, glial activation, oligodendrogenesis impairment, and neuroinflammation. Particularly in MS, it was found increased s 1 b levels in both CSF and serum of patients, as well as in the ex vivo and in vivo models of the disease, indeed considering s 1 b as a powerful therapeutic target. Among the strategies to target this molecule, pentamidine arises as a promising s 1 b inhibitor and it was already reported beneficial outcomes in both in vivo and ex vivo models. So, our first aim was to explore the relevance of this protein in MS-like pathology, and for that we used the s 1 b knockout model and induced the experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, or EIE. During 30 days, we evaluated motor symptoms and afterwards studied pathological hallmarks. On the other hand, we used the ex vivo demyelinating model, the organotypic slice cultures, to corroborate our results and study inflammation. Then, we moved to preclinical studies and investigated the pharmacological value of pentamidine. For that, we had three main groups and again, we used the IE model. Treatment with pentamidine started on the day of induction and for 30 days we evaluated motor symptoms and after that we analyzed pathological hallmarks in the spinal cord and the immune response. Firstly, s 1 b deletion protects from chronic EIE, delaying disease onset and reducing disease severity and motor impairment. Additionally, s 1 b deletion prevents lesion formation, reducing cell infiltration and myelin degradation. Then, we clarify the effect of pentamidine as an effective approach in EIE, and indeed pentamidine reduces disease severity, paralysis and motor impairments, even improving animals' recovery. When evaluating the spinal cord of the animals, we observe that pentamidine prevents the formation of new demyelinating lesions and so preventing cell infiltration and the loss of myelin. Then, we studied oligodendrogenesis, and indeed in lesions, pentamidine treatment increased the percentage of both NBP and NG2 staining, preventing the loss of mature oligodendrocytes and promoting the recruitment of precursor cells. Next, we performed the staining for astrocytes and microglia, and regarding astrocyte staining with GFAP, Pentamidine partially decreased EIE-associated astrogliosis. The same does not happen with microglia when stained for IBO1. Curiously, pentamidine treatment enhanced microglia recruitment, however, the microglia phenotype was unknown. So, we further deciphered which type of microglia was induced upon pentamidine treatment, and indeed, we found that pentamidine enhanced microglia recruitment with a less pro-inflammatory profile and a more phagocytic one. Finally, we studied the immune profile of infiltrating cells. We found an increased population of regulatory T-cells with almost no alteration in the T-helper ones. Concordantly, we observed the same at peripheric level. In sum, our results showed the relevance of s 1 b as a main driver of neuroinflammation in EIE and identified an uncharacterized mode of action of pentamidine, strengthening the possibility to use this drug as an anti-inflammatory and remyelinating therapy for progressive multiple sclerosis. Finally, I want to thank to the CNS Blood and Peripheral Inflammation Group, particularly to the people involved in the project, our collaborators and the funding entities. Thank you all.